Okay, continuing with the uh, dismantling of the engine, we're just now going to take the pistons off. <clears throat> and uh, so we've, uh, we're protecting the comrods uh, with these towels. It also uh, helps prevent circuits pinging off and going down into the crankcase. Although, of course, that doesn't really concern us at the moment because we're going to be taking the crankcases apart. But when we're reassembling, it's always a very good idea to completely cover the crankcase mouths when you put the circuits on in case one pings off and then disappears into the ether. And then you're never quite sure whether it's gone down into the crankcases or is in some corner of the garage. Uh, so we've got our, our circuit pliers. Um, and I'm going to, uh, sorry, I was in two minds there, and I'm just going to use these uh, to see if I can get the, the circuit off, but it's the camera, of course, is right in the way. But I'll sort of be a bit cack-handed and see if I can get the circuit off. The end of the gudgeon pin, or what do the Americans call it? Wrist pin, that's what the Americans call it. Come on, there we go. And that's the, uh, the circuit's out. Um, yeah, and I don't know if I mentioned before, but uh, one mistake I made, I should have made sure that when I took the barrels off, that the uh, conrods weren't going to fall against the uh, the edges of the of the crankcase, which I forgot to do. Um, because we'll probably talk about this again, but you have to be really, really careful not to damage the conrods because uh, if there's a dent or a chip or a scratch on the conrods. That actually becomes a focus for stress. All the stress lines, you know, and there's a massive amount of stress on those conrods. If you think about it, you know, the pressure and tension that's in them is massive. And if there's a chip or something, that actually, like, focuses the stress lines and becomes a real weak point. It's not just a little chip. It becomes a massive uh, stress point. So that's why it's important that we don't damage the conrods uh, at all if possible. Right, so... I've already taken the circlips out. Uh, let's see, uh, on this one, no. No, I haven't taken the circlip out on this side. I thought I had, so I'll take this one out as well. There it comes, good. So both circlips are out as a gudgeon pin. And uh, I'm gonna use my magic screwdriver, which I know is just the right diameter to push on the gudgeon pin, but go through the piston. And I'm just gonna see if, the, if it goes through, but of course it doesn't. Uh, the, the, uh, what I'm saying is the gudgeon pin is a tight fit. It's sort of locked into the piston, um, which gives me a slight problem because what I'm going to do now is to heat up the uh, piston slightly, just to expand it. So the gudgeon pin is gonna come out. But the, my slight problem is, of course, I'm going to use a blowtorch and uh, I've got towels in the way. But, hey, we're not going to be bothered by that. We're going to just use a blowtorch anyway. Got well, the hot air gun if I need to. Oops, a daisy. But, of course, I'm too lazy to go and get the hot air gun because I didn't think about it before. So I'll carry on with my blowtorch and I'll see if I can just heat the pistons up enough because they should only need, they should only need a gentle heating. And of course, these are my uh, garage towels, ex, ex bathroom towels. So, you know, my uh, wife will never want them back again. So if they do singe, which they are doing, then uh, it's okay. Although you know, it's probably not best, this is probably not best health and safety practice, you know. You know, don't don't use this as a health and safety guide in the workshop for your children or whatever, you know. But they should just need a gentle a gentle heating. Okay. Let's see. If that's been enough, just wait for the torch to turn itself off. Let's see if that's been enough to get those gudgeon pins out. 
So I use my trusty screwdriver. There we go, yeah. And there you see, because they just push. No, oh, it was pushing straight out. What's happened there is my trusty screwdriver stuck. Let's have a look, just needs a bit of a tap. There we go. Pull the screwdriver back out and off comes the piston. Okay. Just do the same for the other one. Making sure those con rods aren't going to bash into anything. There we go. Right, pistons are out. We'll have a look at those in a minute. But the next thing I'm going to do, the first thing I'm going to do, if you like, before I do anything else, is to protect the con rods because it's so easy to have them damaged. So, what I do is, <laughs> of course, being me, I'm laughing because you'll laugh at this as well. I use a freezer bag. <laughs> yes, yes, Chris and his freezer bags. Yeah, there's no end to it, is there? So, uh, what I do is I put the freezer bag on over the con rod. Slow down as I can get it. There we go. And then I get some uh, masking tape. Wrap that round the freezer bag. Because all right, I find that the sort of air, like, you know, the, the freezer bag works actually really, really well to protect the con rods. And I used to use toilet rods. You know, someone said, oh, somebody used to say, Use the old cardboard tube from a toilet roll, which sounds like a good idea. But every time you turn the engine over or whatever, boom, they were falling off, uh, you know. So, total pain. So, then there's these special sort of like things you can buy, stockings to go over. But then, you know, I hit on the idea of, the, of these freezer bags, and to be honest, I've never looked back. But anyway, obviously, it doesn't matter what you use, as long as you use something that is going to protect these con rods and stop them from hitting the edges, the top edges of that crankcase, uh, and the hole in the crankcase, because it, they will chip or dent, and that will create a focus for the stress. And these, as I say, the con rods are under massive stress, and if you give them any excuse at all, then you're heading for a uh, broken convoy and you really do not want one of those. Right, pistons. Yeah, for some reason those, uh, the second compression rings are seized on. You can see that's not uh, that second ring, not moving at all. What I do is I will be taking these down to the engineers and we'll be just, you know, we take the old pistons down and uh, we'll take the barrels down and we discuss, sit there and discuss what we think is the best thing to do. Right, then looking down inside the crankcases, and I don't know how well you can see that. I'll see if I can get some extra light on it. So uh, there's all the oil sitting in the crankcase, which is good news and also you know there's oil all over the crankshaft and all on the sort of big ends and that so which is great so we know that that's been sitting in oil a nice oily environment that's been because obviously the engine's been out of the bike for a long time um but everything's uh okay and i'll just see yeah we're just turning the crank the, the camshaft going around everything seems okay on the crank on the camshaft i can't see any obvious um marks or anything you know worn lobes so they look okay and as i say we have the wonderful let's check that's okay yeah. we have the wonderful uh, oil in the uh, crankcase so we know which is great because it's been keeping everything oiled up okay so there we go we got uh pistons off i'll be bagging them up in a minute and then 
all the cylinder head barrels that's in that box so that's my i've bagged everything and then all the bags etc will go in that box and i know that box has got all the cylinder head pistons and barrels etc in there um, but obviously the engine's turning over fine look at that it just feels very nice you know as if it was just moved yesterday so happy about that i'm just going to put a bit more tape around there just cover the tops and uh, then we're going to go on to the primary chain case <laughs> 